Saturday Baseball Game of the Week, brought to you by Cold Refreshing Zima. Zima, a few degrees cooler. By Red Lobster, come in and see for yourself why life on land is dry at Red Lobster. By Toyota, every day belongs to you. Make it count, Toyota, every day. And by MasterCard, official card of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. Back in Seattle, we were talking about the year 1906, and just to give you an idea of some of the other things going on back then, and to put it all in perspective, that was six years prior to the sinking of the Titanic, 14 years before women were allowed to vote, 40 years before the computer, 44 years before color TV. Major League Baseball in Seattle had to wait 63 years for a team. That's a long time ago. A lot of things have happened since 1906. But these current Yankees are trying to break a record held by those 1906 Chicago Cubs who won 116 games. The Yankees 76 and 27 and they lead after four and a half here today in search of their 77th win three to two. David Wells allowed the two run home run in the first inning. He's only allowed two base hits since then. A single in that first later by David Segui and then a single to center field by Cora in the third inning. He is fan three walked only one as Wells shoots for his 13th win. O'Neill near the line and right and Marzano retired. Well, a Zima game break. Again, let's go to Chip Carey at our Fox Network Center. All right, Tom and Bob, big news down in Anaheim where the Red Sox and Angels are battling. Mike Benjamin cracks a two-run homer for the Red Sox. They had a 2 nothing lead. It's now 4-0 for that Boston team really play, playing great baseball. Were it not for the Yankees, who knows how good this Red Sox team would be. 4 nothing is our score in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, no kidding, Chip. Boston going for its 64th win of the season. That's more than any other American League team besides these Yankees. Boston 15 games back. Hang with them. Yeah, Boston made a nice move yesterday, I feel. They picked up Orlando Merced and Greg Swindell from the Twins. Swindell, a veteran left-hander. They can use in a variety of different ways. You get a look at the American League wild card race. The Red Sox with a seemingly comfortable lead over the Rangers but the Rangers Whoa. got considerably better overnight. Wouldn't you say Bobby of all the teams in the major leagues at least the contending teams they did more to better themselves yesterday than anybody else. Oh, Without a doubt they needed a starting pitcher they go out and get Todd Stottlemyre a workhorse that can eat up a lot of innings win you a lot of ball games. They get one of the better young shortstops in the National League in Royce Clayton and they pick up Todd Zeal finally from the Florida Marlins it looked like Zeal was the forgotten man down there in Florida. Martinez to the bag Amaral retired two away. Let's take a look at our BF Goodrich game summary. Talked about Alex Rodriguez a two run home run in the first inning. Tino Martinez getting his 16th to tie the game in the fourth. Jeter gives New York a one run lead in the fifth. And not a sound from Junior. We saw that Anaheim ball club there a moment ago on our game break as Cora looks at a strike. Anaheim doing very little at all. They did acquire catcher Charlie O'Brien, but not taking anything away from O'Brien, but not exactly the kind of player you figure can help you in a neck and neck race win out over the long haul against the Rangers. A lot of times the Obviously the physical effect of picking up some players that can do some things to help your ball club win that's first and foremost but the emotional damage that other teams that don't make a move the, you know what the players feel like when they show up at the ballpark today in Anaheim and realize that well this is the same team we had yesterday and the Rangers have gotten considerably better overnight. Wells lost his hat when he threw that pitch to the plate and he still gets it out. That's how good things are going for the Yankees this season. Rather than throwing a ball all the way back to the screen, the hat falls off the head of David Wells as he delivers the pitch. And what happens? Ah, nothing to it. Ground ball to short, inning over. Oh, to be a Yankee. And 
Linda. This is the exact spot that I fell in love with you. Except for the one who wants her dead. You can't do this. An all-new Melrose Place, Monday at 8, 7 Central. Uh, there's some guys trying to perfect the David Wells cap flip in the middle of a windup. Shane Monahan and Joe Oliver on that Mariners bench having a little fun with that last pitch of the last inning. Sammy Sosa there. Yeah. Sammy impersonation. 3 2, Yankees in front. New York bats in a sixth inning against Jamie Moyer, and Tim Raines looks at a strike, one and one. Yeah, David Wells needed that Babe Ruth cap ending that last inning. Well, when you pay that kind of dough like he did, 35000 bucks for a hat, that thing better stay on your head. Does it come with a chin strap? Two and two out of range. A little dance step. I think they were imitating Bob Brindley the last time in Seattle. That's a good way to get splinters sliding back and forth on a dugout bench. I'll try to explain that. One on the disabled list with splinters. Good play by Jamie Moyer. He'll handle it himself. One away. Well, here's what we're talking about. David Wells goes into his windup and hits the bill of his cap and knocks it right off the back of his head. Never breaks concentration. No sign whatsoever that he even knew that he did it. And then here's his Yankee teammates <laughs> having a little fun. Derek Jeter, David Cohn, and the Mariners even having a laugh about it. And that's what I was talking about. Guys that have a little character. You just don't see people do that too much in the game anymore. But guys having some fun today. Posada two of two knocked in a run with a single to left field in the second inning and an infield hit in the fourth and he pops it up on the first pitch from Moyer playable for Marzano two down well we'd like to tell you tonight on Fox little double trouble at home well don't call your mom call the cops it's an all new cops then see how your tips Help put a child molester behind bars on America's Most Wanted America Fights Back. Tonight on Fox, 8 Eastern, 7 Central. David Wells has thrown the cuffs on a Seattle lineup ever since a two-run home run in the first inning by Alex Rodriguez. Chad Curtis down a strike. Cuffs on him. That's good. Mm. The Yankees have thrown the cuffs on the entire league. Trying to go to 50 games over the 500 mark. Foul back out of play. You know it's just amazing. Joe Torrey. When you look at what he's done since taking over he was 101 games or 109 games pardon me under 500 as a manager when he joined the New York Yankees. 109 games under. In two and a half years, he is now eight games under 500. Since taking over as a manager, the New York Yankees in two and a half years are 101 games over the 500 mark. Staggering. Terrific player. And boy, they love him as a manager in New York. Off the mound, Rodriguez takes care of Curtis in that set. Mariners bat in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Ken Griffey Jr. is due up after a rod. 3-2 ball game. <laughs> Lou Pinella and the Mariners trailing 3-2. Of course, Lou Pinella many, many years wore Yankee pinstripes. Came from Kansas City to the Yankees as a player in 1974. Played for the Yankees in five league championship series. As Rodriguez looks at a strike, a career 305 batter in the LCS. Played in four World Series with the Yankees and hit 319. And then, of course, he managed 86 through 88 in the Bronx and served in just about every capacity you possibly can with an organization. 
used to love to watch Luke Manella hit. What is he doing there? I, I don't like to see that. Do you? Yeah, he's trying to bad back. Trying to stretch his back out there a little bit, I think. Telling Jesse Barfield exactly what's wrong. It hurts right there. Right. Trying to stretch it out. Keep loose. Lou was such a good opposite field hitter. See what he did during his playing career. Almost a hit a ball game. 16 seasons. The all-star team with Kansas City in 72. Four World Series with the Yankees, including a couple of rings, which he wears every day. And he was a uh, rookie of the year with an expansion team, Kansas City, in that 69 season. Longtime teammate of Willie Randolph. Of course, Travis Lee is trying to do what Lou Pinella did. Nobody else besides Lou has been the rookie of the year for an expansion ball club. Travis Lee with the Arizona Diamondbacks hoping to match Lou Pinella's mark. In the hole, long throw, forget about it. Rodriguez is aboard for the third time in the game. Jeter has been on three times. Rodriguez has been on three times. Again, we welcome those of you watching John Rooney, Jeff Torbor called Boston Anaheim. We're at the King Dome in Seattle. Tom Brenneman alongside Bob Brenly, where we continue to bring you each and every bat. Every time Mark McGuire as Sammy Sosa steps in there, and the same holds true for Ken Griffey Jr. 0 for 2 in the game today. Mariners trail 3 2, a leadoff single by Alex Rodriguez to open the sixth inning. Junior is grounded to second and well struck him out back into third. Well if you didn't hear the news earlier today Mark McGuire did not homer in a 3 1 St. Louis loss against the Braves he has 45. Soso with 42 did not homer for the Cubs in a 3 2 win over Colorado. So Junior a chance to gain ground. Sosa hit a couple balls to the warning track in that game but wasn't able to get one out. Junior with a home run cut at that fastball from David Wells. And all three chasing Roger Maris's record of 61 home runs in a season. They are three of only eight players in Major League history to have hit 40 or more home runs through the final day of July. Including Maris who had 40 on the nose in that 61 campaign. A ball of strike. A lot of flash bulbs going off here every time the pitch is delivered to Junior. Fans hoping to catch a picture of their hero launching one into orbit. Might be somewhat of a distraction if you're up there hitting. One and one to Junior. Fooled by the off speed pitch from Wells. I well, we mentioned Wells throws a couple of different breaking balls a little sharp hard breaking slider and then that bigger slower overhand curve that's been the pitch that he's been able to get junior well out in front of chasing pitches out of the zone the junior in his career against Wells has hit six home runs so he's had a lot of success against the Yankee left handed but not today. There you see the numbers career wise that includes an 0 for 2 today. Will this be a snapshot of number 42 we'll find out in a moment. Alex Rodriguez a big lead at first. And the 1 2. Breaking ball away. Wells with a little different look that time dropped down. Normally he's a high three quarters pitcher. His delivery is up above that left shoulder. That time he dropped down almost sidearm. Tried to get a little more break on that breaking ball. Maybe get Junior to give a little bit at home plate. But he missed with the pitch. Two balls, two strikes. Junior with 41 home runs on the season. And Wells again will send Rodriguez, who is already a 30 30 club member this year. 
back to first base. Got a couple of guys in the middle of the lineup. Got to be very comfortable if you're Lou Pinella penciling those two guys in. 74 combined home runs. Quick visit to the mound by Posada, and now well set to get back at it. Two balls, two strikes. Mariners trail with a man aboard, nobody out in the sixth inning, three to two. And here it comes. Fastball in, so the count has gone full. Well, A Rod at first base, more than likely on the move here. Stayed at first base throughout. Junior's at bat to give him that hole on the right side of the infield. Now with the 3 2 count, more than likely will be on the go. Wells, a big deep breath. Three balls, two strikes. Smoke, and what a pickup by Martinez. That'll be a double play. That ball hammered down the line. Latino Martinez coming off the bag after holding on Rodriguez walked right into one. Boy, a tomahawk swing from Junior got a pitch up high and Tino Martinez just sticks his glove out there. You can see he was preparing to make the throw to second base to put a tag on Alex Rodriguez. A Rod, he's not sure what to do right there. He didn't know whether Tino caught that ball in the air or not. He's hung out to dry. One of well, the easier double plays. Hit the ball right to the first baseman. Let him tag the guy that's there. Step on the bag. See you later. Well, I don't know how he caught. I didn't know where that ball went off the bat. Junior swung at that high pitch, was up around his shoulders, and tomahawked that ball. Two. Hard to hit that pitch on the ground. Yeah. Well, Junior bounces into the double play at Martinez. Two down in the inning, nobody on. And it's still a one run Yankee lead in the last of the six. Oh, and two to Edgar Martinez. Kicks and delivers in a fastball inside, a ball and two strikes. You may have noticed that time before Posada gave a sign to David Wells, he shook his head twice. That's an indication that he wants his pitcher to shake his head no as if he's shaking off signals. This gives something for Edgar Martinez to think about up there at the plate. Fly ball, center field, routine for Bernie Williams. And that's that. We played six Yankees in front three two you're watching Fox Sports home of the 1998 World Series and we'll return to Seattle after this word from your local Fox station. Game two the Giants and Phillies today at four on Fox two. Jamie Moyer takes a ball in the seventh inning trailing the Yankees three to two it'll be Brocious not blocking Jeter. And it's ball one to Brocious, who has bounced his short and struck out. Three runs, eight hits, no errors, five left for the Yankees. Seattle, two runs, five hits, no errors, and they have stranded two. Brocious up the third baseline, but foul on the butt. I saw Mickey Mantle one time, same type of play. He was the runner at first, slid back in the first base. You see. Well, it worked for Mickey Mantle, but not for Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> on that play, the first baseman is so intent on, first of all, picking up the ball, in the second place, getting to the bag quickly, and then making that throw to second base because he assumed that Alex Rodriguez was on his way to second. And you could see how a crafty runner, you know, get down and slide underneath. But Alex Rodriguez found himself out there in no man's land, no chance to get back. 
I could turn out to be a huge play in this ball game. If that ball gets by Martinez, it's down in the corner, and Rodriguez at the very minimum winds up at third. He might score. Watch out. That bat goes flying into the stands, and hopefully everybody's okay down there. A little boy right in that territory. Hopefully, Lord knows, hopefully he's all right. Well, hopefully everybody's okay. That goes without saying. It looked like it may have ricocheted off a chair before striking the young man, and they're going to take him out and make sure he's okay. Just scared, it looks like, more than anything else, and thank goodness for that. Rocha's gone on strike six to the game by Jamie Moyer. There's been an alarming number of situations just like that. Bats flying in stands in the dugouts this year. I think it's due to the fact that so many more pitchers have gone to the straight changeup as an out pitch, more so than breaking balls. You get fooled on that changeup, you, your mind tells you react to fastball, you start your swing, you see that that pitch is not going to be in the zone when your bat's there. Hitters try to extend their swing, really get their arms out there. Try to almost make that bat get a little bit longer to get a piece of that ball, and that's usually when it comes flying out of the hands. Jam shot, pop fly. This may fall in for a hit. Rodriguez able to run it down. Well, Rodriguez has done it all here today. A two-run home run, a single, a walk, and now a very nice play up the left field line. And Alex Rodriguez had a long way to go. He was pinching up the middle a little bit on Chuck Knobloch, trying to take that hole up the middle away, and had a long way to run. Well, he covers so much ground. That ball didn't seem like it was going to hang in the air that long. Well, Seattle hoping they can do what they did in 95 when they rallied, of course, that year on August the 1st, 11 games behind Anaheim. They recaptured. The American League West title after a one game playoff and then many Yankee fans remember that play on the base hit by Martinez It scored junior and off for the Mariners they went to the league championship series only to lose to Cleveland but that was a miracle finish here. Rodriguez only spent a little bit of time that season with Seattle. They were 11 and a half back as late as August the 16th. So I mean there's always a chance. Then they went on in 1997 to win the division again. And when the season started, everybody was talking in Seattle about a trip to the World Series. Well, with everything that Rodriguez has done today, you can't forget about Jeter. I mean, he has matched him all day long. Rodriguez a home run, Jeter a home run. Rodriguez a single, Jeter a single. Rodriguez a walk, Jeter a walk. <laughs> So in that contest for bragging rights Rodriguez still has a slight edge because his home run was a two run shot. Yeah but the guy on the right's winning. Well that's bottom line. But I'm talking about bragging rights. I got rights. you. I got you. Well now I got a question for you here based on that with this pitch. Two two on the way. Rounded well Rodriguez gonna make sure he doesn't better him with another <laughs> hit so that'll retire the side middle of the seventh still a 3 2 Yankee lead. In a course of 162 games I think uh, you need to solidify your defense because that's what wins ball games. Um, home runs RBIs are all great. Uh, clutch hitting is huge but defense and the steadiness of, of an everyday shortstop is, is very very important to a ball club. Well certainly Alex Rodriguez a fine play down the left field line in this seventh inning his team trails however Jeter and the Yanks three to two. Sagi Buner and Davis do up against David Wells another outstanding effort from the Yankee left hander. 
His 20th start of the year he is searching for his 13th win. He has allowed only five hits and three of them came in the first inning. He's only given up two runs and both of those were in the first inning. Boy, this Yankee front line starting pitching has been brilliant from start to the current. Arabu, a strong effort in this series opener last night. We've talked a little bit about Andy Pettit, David Cohn with 15 wins. And Oscar Hernandez at 5 and 3 with a 3.6 ERA. You can't go wrong. Nice balance, righty lefty. Wells and Pettit, two left handers. Cone, Arabu, and Hernandez, all right handers. Armless roller at Nabla. One away as his throw is on the money. Let's take a look at our Toyota game summary. A long ball prevalent today in the game. Two for New York. One off the bat of Alex Rodriguez of the Mariners. Junior has been silenced by Wells. Speaking of Wells, terrific since the opening inning. Yeah, he's really mixed his pitch as well. He's used his fastball on both sides of the plate. He's been able to stand up the Mariners hitters with fastballs on the inside part of the plate. He's thrown his breaking ball at a variety of different speeds. Slower ones to junior, harder ones to the other Mariners hitters. One. Strike one to Jay Buhner who has singled, or pardon me, has struck out and bounced a third. One and one. Two. On the inside corner, and there's a strike. We'll be bringing you up to date. On that Anaheim Boston contest taking on in Anaheim today. And a 1 2 to Buner. Brocious backs up at third base, plenty of time. Two up, two down. Well, let's do just that right now to our Fox Network Center, a Zima game break. And here's Chip Carey. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's head on out west to Oakland where Sandy Alomar Jr. just hit a three run homer for the Indians. He challenged his mates to turn it up as they started this long western road trip for the tribe and he has done just that the Indians playing very well and now leading Oakland four to three back to you in Seattle. Go to Fort Myers for 1999. Well so happy so pleased not only that their team won last night here in Seattle as that one is hit foul by Davis but that the Cleveland Indians the team that knocked the Yankees out of the postseason last year did not acquire Randy Johnson. Cleveland in fact did not pull off a blockbuster trade of any kind. Well Cleveland in a similar situation to the Yankees obviously not the same kind of record but they feel that they're ready to compete in the postseason with the roster they have in place right now. Get a look at the American League Central Division standings. Cleveland in command by and large from the get go. The Yankees and Tribe have played seven times this year. And the Yankees have won four of the seven. So Cleveland has certainly held its own Randy Johnson or no Randy Johnson. Seattle was always a team in past years that had dominated the Yankees, knocking them out of the 95 playoffs. And that was a team that the last couple of years, you always heard the Yankee people kind of, you know, whisper that we don't want to take on the Mariners. They seem to have our number in the postseason and during the regular season. This year, you hear a little bit of that from some of the Yankee people about Cleveland. Into right center field, hit pretty well by Davis, and it's off the wall. 
Williams plays it with a bare hand, but not before Davis is in with a two-out double. Now Bernie Williams had a long way to go to catch up to that gapper in right center field. He was shaded a little bit over into the gap in left center on Russ Davis. Ball hit crisply off the wall in right center. Just too much territory to cover out there, even for somebody like Bernie Williams, who covers a lot of ground in center field. Ball hit about halfway up the wall in right center. Nice play to get it back in quickly, but no play on Davis at second base. So now John Marzano with two away and a tying run at second here in the seventh inning. Breaking ball in there, a strike. See, Marzano only eight runs batted in all season long. Very little playing time, but has to now with the injury to Dan Wilson. And the 0 1 from Wells. Another off speed pitch, and this time a swing and a miss, nothing in two. I guess David Wells, when he gets ahead in the count, it's pretty much over. Teams have had some success on the first pitch that he delivers to a batter. They've hit 354 this year against him, but after he gets ahead with that first strike, that drops down to 216, and if he gets ahead 0 2, the batting average drops down to 170. Wells trying to pitch through this seventh inning with a tying run at second base and two down. And here comes the 0 2. In the air, shallow right field. O'Neill is there, inning over. One hit, one left. We go to the eighth. Still the Yankees in front, three to two. Dave. Jamie Moyer takes the mound here in the eighth inning. His team trailing three to two. It'll be the heart of the New York quarter. And O'Neill drives one to right. That'll airmail Buner and right who plays it off the wall. And O'Neill with a single to begin the eighth inning. We asked Jamie Moyer about having to face his New York Yankee team. Here's what he the told Yankees us. Yankees are a very good ball club. You know, they, they swing the bats. They can run the bases. They take the extra bases. They can steal. They can hit and run. Offensively, they can pretty much do whatever they want. And uh, they have, you know, a good bit of power. You know, whether you say, well, you know, they don't have a lot of power. I think they do. I give them that respect. They do. Well, certainly respect deserved today. The Yankees have hit two home runs in the game. Tino Martinez leading off the fourth. Derek Jeter to break a 2-2 tie in the fifth. As Bernie Williams looks at ball one. Greg McCarthy, a left-hander, begins to get loose in a Seattle bullpen. We talked a lot about David Wells. Jamie Moyer has pitched a very good game. He has allowed nine hits, but only three runs. And that one down the line into the corner. O'Neill on his way to third, trying to retrieve his Amaral. They're going to wave O'Neill around. He will score. And Bernie Williams with a double gives the Yankees a 4 to 2 lead. It looked like Amaral had some problems down in the left field corner. Well, there must be some kind of a black hole out there in left field here at the Kingdom. Mariners have tried. 60 different players beside Ken Griffey Jr. out there in left field and nobody has been able to get the job done on any kind of consistent basis. Rich Amaral plays this ball down in the corner. At that point appeared he was in pretty good shape but just doesn't come up with the ball has to regroup go after it a second time and you can see Paul O'Neill chugging home from third base without a throw. No error charged to Amaral on the play. It's a double and an RBI for Bernie Williams as Tino Martinez looks at a strike. One of the few mistakes by Moyer in this game. Got a change up up and over the plate to Bernie Williams. He was able to keep it fair down at third baseline. One and one as a breaking ball misses away.
Williams his 54th run batted in on his 20th two base hit piling up big numbers despite a trip to the disabled list one and two now to Tino Martinez. Joe Torre, you see, kind enough to wear a microphone for us at Fox Sports here today, and we'll let you hear his reaction to the ball hit by Bernie Williams for an RBI double down the left field line just a moment ago. One two pitch on the outside corner, strike three. Well, let's listen in to Joe Torre and our Fox sounds of the game. That's it, Bernie. That's it, Bernie. That's what we do. Scoop by him. That's it. He couldn't pick it up. That's good manager. Scoop by him. I couldn't pick it up. Hey, good manager. That's the way we do things. You heard him say that to Bernie Williams. That's the way we do things. That's what the Yankees have been doing all year, taking advantage of opportunities, not relying on the long ball in the big inning, taking your offensive opportunities as they come in the ball game. Well, you saw that shot there. Joe Torre just leaning back in the New York Yankee dugout. Now, does he look like a man about to go 50 games over 500 to you? <laughs> well, he thinks so. Well, Joe Torre is pretty much the same guy win lose or draw you know, doesn't really show a lot of emotion that's about as much as you'll see from Joe Torre a little bit of cheerleading he did on Bernie Williams double down the left field line. Well he sure does laugh a lot though sitting down there next to Don Zimmer. Well you talk about one of the great characters in all the baseball that's how you normally see Don Zimmer a smile on his face his 50th consecutive year wearing a major league uniform. Amazing. Can't find a real job. No. And he'll <laughs> tell you that. I'll tell you, we're so very fortunate in this job to be able to sit down in the dugout or in the clubhouse and listen to some of the stories that these great baseball men have to tell. You heard Joe Torrey just relaying a very quick story about Mickey Mantle, the similar play that we had in this game. I saw Mickey Mantle slide back in on a play like that. There's a fair ball down the left field line again into the corner. Bernie Williams racing home. Reigns in with a double. And the Yankees now lead five to two. Now, Jamie Moyer starting to show some signs of fatigue here, getting more pitches up over the heart of the plate. Other than the home run balls, he'd been hitting his spots very well, staying out of the middle of the strike zone, working the corners, but Seems to be losing it. Well, he'll pitch on another day. They'll bring in Bobby Ayala from the bullpen, trailing 5 2. Jamie Moyer leaves the game and talk about a classy move after 117 pitches and a double. Read the lifts. He looks at home plate umpire Tim Welking. Says right there, nice job. Well, partly because Walkie was giving Moyer some of that inside corner on the fastball, stood up some of the Yankees hitters. But it would have been very easy after surrendering 11 base hits and leaving the ball game down by three runs with a runner on base to throw some darts at that home plate umpire, but Jamie Moyer's way too classy for that. Bobby Ayala, meanwhile, now on the pitch. 5 2 Yankees lead. And Posada looks at a strike. See the numbers. A rough season for Ayala. Although he's been much better lately. His last five appearances spanning nine innings, he struck out 10 batters, allowed only one run on five hits. Reigns at second base. And there's strike two. Ayala gets to two strikes and then goes to that fork ball down low in the strike zone trying to get the swinging strike that ball's put in play it's going to be a ground ball somewhere in the infield.
Lou Pinella actually watched as his bullpen pitched very well in the month of July. I mean, they've been raked over the coals for the better part of two years. But during the month of July, the bullpen had an ERA of 2.2. They had trouble scoring runs, was a problem in July. Believe it or not. That is hard to believe for this Mariners offensive ball club, leading the American League in home runs. In the air to right center field, Buner over, and he'll make the play. Reigns tags and advances on to third. Two away. We'd like to invite you to join us a week from today for Fox Saturday Major League Baseball. Some of you will see the Cubs and Sammy Sosa against Mark McGuire and the Cardinals. And for those of you out west in Mexico, Colorado, Bobby, you and I will be in San Francisco for the Braves and the Giants. The Giants very much in the heart of the wild card race going into play today. San Francisco three and a half back. That's been pushed to four behind with a Cub 3 2 win over Colorado at Wrigley Field today. Fouled away by Curtis, one and one. Hey, here in a minute, we're going to bring you some audio and video. The first comments made by Randy Johnson. Our crew able to catch up with him at the airport and hear his comments the next half inning about leaving Seattle and joining the Astros. So you won't want to miss that. Chip Carey will bring that your way the next half inning. Johnson went racing out of here last night after Lou Pinella notified Johnson in the dugout. We showed you some of that earlier that Johnson had been traded. And Johnson had no comment whatsoever. He didn't even look at anybody walking out of here last night. Rounded down to third. Davis a backhand. Good throw, and that'll end the inning. But well, the Yankees tack on two big runs, three hits, and David Wells goes to the mound of the eighth, leading 5-2. Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week, brought to you by AT&T. It's all within your reach. By the U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. By Napa Auto Parts, we keep America running. And by Pepsi, official soft drink of Major League Baseball. Of course, a big story here in the Emerald City last night at the trading deadline hour of 9 o'clock. Randy Johnson dealt to Houston, and he did not talk to anyone leaving the kingdom last night. No comment whatsoever about the trade for three minor leaguers. But again, here at Fox Sports, we caught up with Randy Johnson at the airport. Going to join his new team, the Astros, and after Amaral bats, here in the eighth inning, we'll let Chip Carey bring you up to date and give you those comments made by the big unit. Well, they say everything is big in Texas. And certainly Randy Johnson will fit in as part of the landscape there. You see the headlines in the paper. Is this the best the M's could do? That's been the general sentiment throughout the Pacific Northwest. All the headlines in the papers, the radio call in shows. Fans here at the ballpark today just stunned at the fact the Mariners did not get immediate help at the major league level, trading away their their ace pitcher. One one. Two and one to Amaral and Lou Pinella made a note today in our visit with him that that was the best trade on the table at the time. And he said that in his estimation they were getting the second best pitching prospect Houston had to offer and the best infield player in the Astros system that they had available. Wells trying to barehand the ball and that's going to go as an infield hit for Amaral. We'll get right back to the ball game but let's check in again for those Randy Johnson comments our Zima game break and Chip Carey. Tom and Bob thanks a lot Randy Johnson on the way to Pittsburgh to pitch for the Houston Astros. These were his comments upon his trade to the Astros. The fans uh, have a lot of memories that I've left here. I have a lot of memories here with my teammates uh, uh, Jay Buhner Jr. and uh, Edgar 
uh, and myself uh, are the four people that uh, have been in this franchise uh, in the very lean years, and uh, we've all went uh, to battle all together in 95 and, and 97, and uh, there's a lot of memories. Uh, I spoke to my teammates uh, as uh, they came in, uh, addressed uh, and told them what happened, and uh, said my, uh, my goodbyes and uh, wished them all well. And uh, I, I'm just uh, very fortunate that uh, I had uh, nine, uh, nine great years here. Um, had an opportunity to meet my wife and uh, have my three, ch my three children born here. And um, like I said, there's just some wonderful fans here. Uh, they've been very supportive over the nine years. And uh, uh, I would have talked to them, a lot of them yesterday, but I just felt uh, under the circumstance, I just kind of wanted to get out of the environment and, and um, find out you know, and sit down and, and uh, kind of unwind over the day. It was a very stressful day, but uh, for the most part, I just want to thank the fans very much for uh, being so supportive of uh, my effort, and uh, hopefully I've given them a lot of memories. Through, and uh, I wish the team uh, and uh, my teammates a, uh, a successful season this year. It's not over by any means, and uh, I know what uh, makes that team tick, and uh, there's a lot of guys in there that want to win, and... Uh, and uh, that they're determined to win, so hopefully that will happen this year for him. So Randy Johnson wishing his team well. They trail five to two here in the bottom of the eighth inning, but all of a sudden trying to get back in an Amaral and infield hit Cora a single to right his third hit of the game, and here come the boppers, Rodriguez and then Junior on deck. And Rodriguez quickly down a strike. The Yankee bullpen springs to life for the first time in the game. The left-hander Graham Lloyd and the right-hander, the closer Mariano Rivera. The right-hander down there, pardon me, is Ramiro Mendoza. They generally say Mariano Rivera for the night two on nobody out Rodriguez perfect on the day a two run home run a walk and a single in the sixth inning Yankees got two here in the top half of the eighth to turn a one run lead into a three run advantage. And the 0 1 to Rodriguez. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. Junior waits. Power against power right there. David Wells with a good fastball right in the heart of the plate. Blew it by Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez will be a little more defensive up there at the plate with two strikes. Be more apt to hit the ball to the opposite field. See how Wells goes after him. Oh, and two, and they set up inside, and it swung on and fouled back into the seats. Well, how would you go after him now at 0 and 2? I think Alex Rodriguez is a very good low ball hitter if the pitch is in the strike zone. He'll chase bad pitches low out of the zone, but I think with David Wells' assortment of stuff, he'd be better off either throwing a fastball up and in or bouncing a breaking ball down low and away. That big slow breaking ball that he's been using on Ken Griffey Jr. throughout this ball game. Oh, and two, and two on, and nobody out. Rodriguez waits. Got him swinging on the breaking ball. Wells, his fourth strikeout. And here comes Junior. Junior grounded to second in the first inning, struck out swinging in the third. He hit a bullet that looked like it was headed for the right field corner in the sixth inning with Rodriguez at first. But Martinez holding the runner on, scooped up the one hopper and turned it into a double play. And Wells a pause in the pitch. 
grounded weakly to the right side. Knobloch will underhand toss over to Martinez. So Wells has owned Griffey in four trips today. Two down in the inning. And throughout this ballgame, the Mariners hitters have tried to attack David Wells on that first pitch. I mentioned the numbers. That's when the league has had the most success against David Wells, attacking the first pitch. Gets Junior to chase a fastball down low in the strike zone, hit the easy grounder to the right side. So here's Edgar Martinez. He has bounced to third, grounded to short, and fly to center. Wells will now work out of his regular windup. He has a 5 2 lead in the eighth. And there's a fastball strike. Boy, Wells is so tough in situations with a game on the line. He had a three run lead, maybe a little lapse in concentration. Amaral a hit, then Cora a hit, but with the big guys coming up, he has struck out Rodriguez and got Junior on a ground ball to second. And now quickly ahead of Martinez at 0 2. Edgar's the Mariners leading hitter with runners in scoring position. However, David Wells does not give up a lot of hits with runners in scoring position. Coming into the game today, 0 for 19. 0 for their last 19 opponents were with runners in scoring position. In the air, is this playable? It looks to be, and the inning is over. David Wells pumps his fist as that ball went into the mid of Martinez. We go to the night. Yankees lead 5-2. Well, certainly a season lost at sea for the Mariners. Six times they've blown leads after the eighth inning. Some of those other numbers we'll show you again. The fewest come from behind wins in baseball and in one run games only four wins in 22 affairs. And the two main culprits look no further and you ask Lou Pinella and he'll just tell you he's never seen anything like it in all his years of baseball. One the defense and two the bullpen. Now Lou has gone on at length that he has never seen a worse defensive ball club than the 1998 Seattle Mariners. Every day you think you've seen everything you come back and they do something the next day that just defies defensive logic. One two pitch and a foul tip into the mid of Marzano strikeout for Bobby Ayala his first. Well, we were talking about defense we're only going to show you the good on our Red Lobster catch of the day. Tino Martinez fielding the screamer steps on the bag gets ready to throw to second realizes he doesn't need to waste a throw because Alex Rodriguez is right there. Had a rod started back to the bag one step sooner he might have been able to slide in underneath the tag of Tino Martinez but we'll never know. Another quiet game for Chuck Knobloch. As you get a look at David Wells, eight strong innings. And he looks like he's ready to go back out there in the night. And who knows, Joe Torre may elect to do just that, although he has his closer now warming up. Earlier it was Mendoza and Lloyd, the setup men. And now the closer, Mariano Rivera. Rian Odenablak. You know, you come in and you have a chance, as we do, Bobby, to talk to the players and the coaches and Joe Torrey, the manager. Our first look in person at the Yankees this season. You know, the first question you logically ask is, are you guys really this good? Well, you ask them over and over again, and they say, hey, yeah, the regular season is terrific, but. If we don't bring that World Series trophy back to New York when all is said and done as they did in 1996, what does it all mean? Absolutely nothing. In fact, to put everything in perspective, teams that have won 105 or more games 
You see six times that team lost in the World Series. And the one everybody remembers in modern times, I guess you will, that 54 Indians team. Lost to the Giants in the World Series. The Yankees are on pace to win 120 ball games if they continue winning the way they have been. But you're absolutely right. That's all window dressing if you don't get to bring home the big iron at the end of the season. Yeah, especially since the Yankees did win the series a couple of years ago. Yankee fans are expecting that trophy to stay in the Bronx for a long time. Oh, one pitch. Broken bat goes flying onto the field of play, thank goodness, and nobody hurt in the stands. And well, Derek Jeter, it's all he has left of that bat. And there were a lot of hits in that ball. <laughs> he fought this pitch off. Fastball that's running back inside. Boy, that is about as badly as you can get jammed. Jeter unable to get any kind of extension. He's left with that tent peg. It's all that little piece of a handle is good for now. Take a camp in it. Tie off your tent ropes on. Sounds good to me. You can do that right here in the Pacific Northwest. Go over to Mount Rainier for a couple of days. They have an insulated tent. There's still snow on that mountain. Always snow on that mountain. One and two to Jeter. Now the funny thing is, you know, one of the bat boys over there on the visitor side will probably take that little nub of a handle home with him and say, this is Derek Jeter's bat. Of course, there's no way to prove that. Jeter gone on strikes. And that'll end the inning. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Yankees lead 5-2. David Wells takes a mound in the ninth inning, and Joe Torre will indeed give him a chance to finish this game. Wells in his 20th start, going for his third complete game of the season. Mariano Rivera is down there, ready to go just in case. Well, the Yankees want to keep David Segui on the right side of the plate, where he's not the same kind of power hitter that he is from the left side. Should Segui reach base, we may see Joe Torre go to the man out of the bullpen. High fly ball, pretty well hit left center field. Bernie Williams has room. One pitch, one out. Our game today produced by Michael Weissman, directed by Jim Lynch, the senior coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on Fox, John Filippelli. The pregame coordinating producer, Scott Ackerson, the pregame show produced by Gary Lang, directed by Bob Levy, the associate director, Jennifer Love. And the senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. The executive producers, David Hill and Ed Gorin. Well, the New York Yankees, two outs away from going to 50 games over 500 on their 77th win of the year. This should be the second out. Jeter backpedals and calls off all comers. Two pitches, two outs here in the Mariner night. It's so tough to come back against David Wells when he has a lead in a ball game. He so rarely walks anybody. He's not going to allow you to have a big inning unless your bats do it offensively. He's not going to put runners on base, get himself in a jam. He's going to force you to hit the ball, put it in play. And the Mariners haven't had a lot of success doing that today. Russ Davis, one of three in the game. High fly ball in the left field. Curtis is there, and that is that. And Bobby, can anybody slow down this juggernaut? I don't think so. I'll tell you, you get a feeling being around a ball club that they have that that ultimate confidence that every day they take the field, they expect to win, and nothing has happened this year to the Yankees to make them believe otherwise. 50 games over 500. And when you look at the team, you feel that will challenge them when all is said and done the most in the American League. Well, we have to go back to the Cleveland Indians, another very strong team that stood pat at the trading deadline because they felt they were ready for the postseason. I'll tell you, the, the playoffs this year shape up to be very exciting. Well, the New York Yankees trying to become the all-time winningest team during the regular season in baseball history, chasing the 1908 Chicago Cubs, who won 116. The Yankees get their 77th win on this the 1st of August. 
So for Bob Brindley, I'm Tom Brenneman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Our final Yankees 5, Seattle 2. Again, a reminder, Chip Carey and Steve Lyons will be along with scores right after these messages. You're watching Fox Sports, the home of the 98 World Series. Is a trophy headed back to the Bronx come October? Now, Peter, pipe up my ball. No doubt about it. Sure, I didn't throw it to them. People get on me, say, oh, Michael, you push you. And it always killed me. I said, well, go look at my contract and read my job description. It says do whatever it takes to catch that football. And that's what I got to do. Troy never threw them the ball. He always throws it to me. All right, Chip Carey, Steve Psycho Lions back in Los Angeles. Let's check out the scores from earlier today. You just saw the Yankees beat the Mariners 5-2. They're 0-1 without Randy 0 Johnson. 0-1 since the trade <laughs> and knew. counting. I knew that was coming, my friend. Red Sox and the Angels battling down eight Anaheim. Red Sox having a great game. 8-3 is your score there in the ninth inning. Buford, Benjamin, and O'Leary all homered for the Boston Red Sox. Tight game down in Atlanta. Braves beat the Cardinals 3-1. No homers for Mark McGuire. Well, they're pitching him so tough, living on that outside corner as they always do, and Mark couldn't make the adjustment. KTVU Fox 2, celebrating 40 years. Summer.